Howdy y'all, I'm TJ with Bear Gaming, and these are the ranged weapons of 7 Days to Die. In this video, I'll show you all the stats, perks, mods, and best uses for the firearms and bows. What's the best gun? What should I invest skill points into? What are the pros and cons for each firearm? All questions a player asks as they begin their journey in 7 Days to Die. Hopefully, I can help. Let's start with the rifles. They come in four tiers. The pipe rifle, the hunting rifle, lever action rifle, and sniper rifle. The pipe rifle is a single shot break action rifle with a slow rate of fire. Be sure to hit your target because the zombies may have enough time to close the distance if you miss. The hunting rifle is also a single shot rifle, but in the bold action variety. This allows for a very slight decrease in reload time. It also has better range, durability, and damage compared to the pipe rifle. The lever action rifle has a 5 shot tubular magazine. This allows for multiple hits in rapid succession and a similar reload time from empty as the others. The lever action rifle does have a bit lower range but increased damage. Finally, the sniper rifle, the king of the rifles. This fast shooting semi auto 12 shot rifle has massive damage, range, and durability. All these rifles have high single hit damage and the best long range capabilities compared to other firearms at their tier level. But at the cost of low capacity and poor hip fire accuracy. Just remember, one shot, one kill. How about rifle perks and skill books? The Deadeye attribute in the perception tree offers increased damage, faster aim, and quicker reloads at each level. After level 3 is unlocked, you also get kill streak bonuses of 10, 20, and then 30% damage with each kill, which gets better at each level. The Sniper skill book offers a few general bonuses including specialized ammo crafting, damage increase, and faster reloads. There are also some unique items like the ability to craft a ghillie suit for stealth and the ability to blow limbs and heads off. Here are the ammo offerings for the rifles. The general use 7.62, good for everyday use. The high power 7.62 ammo for increased damage and the armor piercing 7.62 ammo for penetrating a target and ignoring 50% of the zombie's armor. But it puts a bit more stress on the gun. There are also several mods available for the rifles to increase damage, range, and aim faster. For the pipe rifle, I suggest the following mods. Barrel extender mod increases damage, range, aimed accuracy at the cost of hip fire accuracy. A scope to increase magnification when aiming, either two times, four times, or eight times. The bipod mod to increase accuracy and handling while aimed. For the hunting rifle, lever action rifle, or sniper rifle, add the rad remover mod to disable the health regeneration for radiated zombies for 90 seconds. Next is the shotguns, one of my favorite firearms in 7 Days to Die. There are four shotguns. The pipe shotgun is a break action single shot early game weapon. Double barrel shotgun features two shots and a lot of spread. pump shotgun which has a faster rate of fire and holds eight shots and an auto shotgun at the top with 16 shot magazine and semi-auto functionality shotguns offer massive damage with 10 pellets in each shot offering between 8 and 25 damage per pellet and a four second stun to targets the shotguns offer the best single shot damage of any ranged weapon but it comes at a hefty price slow rates of fire Low magazine capacity and very short ranges, shotguns are close quarters firearm. Shotgun perks and skill books focus on increasing damage, rate of fire, and lowering reload times. The attribute boomstick increases damage, rates of fire, and quicker reloads and also dismember chance. At level 3, you get an increase in stun duration to 8 seconds, very handy for the runners. The skill books shotgun messiah add 2 ammo types and a few other bonuses to target damage. The ammo for the shotgun is the shot shell, which is a 10 pellet round with each pellet inflicting damage. But be warned, it's easy for a few of the pellets to miss at longer ranges. The slugs are a large solid bullet that causes a lot of damage, increases range, and penetrates two targets while reducing armor 50%. Perfect for the higher level zombies. The last ammo option is the breaching round. This round is designed to obliterate doors and wood blocks at two blocks away with 1000 damage per shot. Just don't try to use it on safes. You don't get any bonuses in damage in Alpha 21. 
Last are the shotguns or mods. The shotguns are able to take a few special mods that aim to improve accuracy and magazine capacity. For the pipe shotgun, I suggest the shotgun choke mod to tighten the shot spread, the foregrip mod to increase handling and accuracy while hip firing and moving, and the tracking stock mod improves weapon handling while moving or hip fire. The double barrel, add the laser sight mod to increase aim down sight speed with more hip fire accuracy. Pump shotgun, add shotgun choke mod, the shotgun tube extender mod to increase the mag three, or grip mod to increase handling and accuracy while firing from the hip or moving, and of course the retracting stock mod. When using the auto shotgun, you should use the shotgun choke mod, the drum mag mod, which doubles the gun capacity at the cost of a slower reload, the foregrip mod, and the retracting stock mod. Bows and crossbows are the Swiss Army knife of the range weapons. There are four levels of bow and two for the crossbows. The primitive bow is the first ranged weapon most players make. It has moderate damage and poor accuracy, but it can be fired and reloaded without slowing you down. After the primitive is the wooden bow, with increases in damage, accuracy, and durability. Next is the compound bow, with good damage output, good accuracy, and increased durability. The iron crossbow has similar stats to the compound bow, but suffers from decreases in speed while reloading just like every other ranged weapon in the game. with the compound crossbow being the best damage output and accuracy of all the archery equipment. With easily obtained ammo, a wide range of ammo options, sneak bonus damage, bows and crossbows are able to take down zombies from early all the way to late game. They offer the player the best bang for the buck in terms of ammo costs and are the single best option for the stealth player. With bows and crossbows, the only real downside is rate of fire. Arrows and bolts take time to travel to the target, and all are single shots requiring two seconds to reload. The attribute Archery is focused on increasing damage, aim, draw, and reload speeds to help address the weaknesses of the bow. The Ranger's Guide to Archery skillbooks unlock advanced arrow options and add sneak damage. Speaking of ammo, the bows can fire the Stone Arrow, Iron Arrow, and Steel, which negate target armor, the Flaming Arrow to set enemies on fire for 120 points of damage, and finally the exploding arrow with 180 points of damage and a 4 block radius. The crossbows fire bolts, not arrows, but there are the same variety of bolts as arrows but with increased damage ratings. Like the shotguns, bows and crossbows have some unique mods. For the bows, use these mods. Polymer string mod to increase arrow and bolt velocity, arrow rest mod to improve accuracy, a rad remover mod to disable health regeneration for zombies 90 seconds, and the ergonomic grip mod to increase bow handling by 10%. For the crossbows, polymer string mod, rad remover mod, reflex sight to improve weapon handling and fast target acquisition, and the bipod mod to increase accuracy and handling while aimed. Pistols are compact, mid-range jack-of-all-trades with no major weaknesses, but also don't outshine anything else. They are great as secondary weapons until the SMG or Desert Vulture is unlocked. The first pistol is the Pipe Pistol, which is a 6-shot revolver with a max range of 12 blocks and an average reload time of 4.5 seconds. It's among the slowest reloads of any ranged weapon, second only to the Pipe Shotgun. It also has low damage, so it may take all 6 to take a powerful zombie down. The pistol improves everything with increased mag capacity, damage, rate of fire, and a quicker reload. It's best to upgrade from the pipe pistol as soon as possible. Moving from the pistol to the SMG is game changing. It nearly doubles every stat from the pistol. The SMG is definitely a good choice for late game. But if you're looking for more power, then the Magnums are for you. The 44 Magnum Revolver is a six shot monster with a lot of damage and a slow reload. The Desert Vulture is a bit better with best in category damage coming close to even the rifles. This massive amount of damage is offset by low mag capacity and a slow rate of fire. The attribute Gunslinger governs the pistols. These increase the damage and rate of fire while decreasing reload time. It also offers critical hits at level 3 and beyond on either the 5th, 4th, or 3rd hit depending on level. There are two skillbook sets that cover the pistols, Magnum Enforcer and Pistol Pete. 
Pistol Pete is for the 9mm guns and, and boosts damage and rate of fire in addition to other items seen here. The Magnum Enforcer book offers increased damage, better buying rates at the traders, and better penetration. Both skill books add the ability to craft high power and armor piercing varieties of pistol rounds, with high power having increased damage and AP ammo, which lowers armor ratings and penetrates more targets. What about the best mods for the pistols? Well, for the 9mm pipe pistol, the barrel extender mod increases damage range and aimed accuracy, decreasing hip fire accuracy. Laser sight mod increases aim down sight speed and more accurate hip fire. Reflex sight to improve weapon handling and fast target acquisition. For the pistols, you should use the rad remover mod, the muzzle brake, the magazine extender to increase magazine capacity, and the laser sight. For the SMG, the foregrip increases handling and accuracy while hip firing or moving, the drum magazine to double magazine capacity, the muzzle brake mod, and the rad remover mod. For the 44 Magnum revolver and desert vulture, you should use the muzzle brake mod, laser sight, Reflex Sight to improve weapon handling and fast target acquisition, and the Rad Remover mod. Machine guns are devastating ranged weapons that offer high rates of fire, large magazine capacities, and moderate range and damage. These are the go-to when large numbers of zombies are present. But all the firepower has a cost, and that cost is ammo. These guns use large amounts of ammo and can degrade quickly, as each round costs durability. The lowest tier machine gun is the pipe machine gun. Its stats are on par with the pistol. Low magazine capacity for a machine gun, and with considerable accuracy issues when not aimed, this one could really work if modded carefully. Next is the AK-47. With 30 round mags and a decent rate of fully automatic fire, this machine gun will carry any player far into the game. Third is the assault rifle, offering 3 round burst by default. It's more accurate and has better damage with a faster rate of fire. Finally, the big gun, the M60 machine gun. This massive beast offers 60 rounds standard, large amounts of damage, and the second fastest rate of fire in the game. This gun just shreds zombies. Its only shortcoming, and it's a minor one, is the reload time, which is among the slowest. Given the right mods, these machine guns can get you through nearly anything, provided you brought enough of any of the three 7.62mm options. The perks found in Machine Gunner are very similar to the others offering increased damage, rate of fire, and faster reload. Where it separates itself from the others is at level 3 when you start getting 2 stamina per hit, increasing up to 6 at level 5. This will allow the player to almost continually run and gun. The Skillbook series Automatic Weapon Handbook seeks to eliminate any weaknesses the machine guns had by increasing accuracy, magazine capacity, damage, and at completion increased running speed. Maxed out, the machine guns are the best of all the ranged weapons in terms of damage as long as the ammo holds out. For all machine guns, you should use these mods. Muzzle brake, foregrip, retracting stock, and the magazine extender, and then the drum mag when possible. For the M60, the muzzle brake mod, drum mag, foregrip, and rad remover. Final ranged weapons are the robotic weapons. The robotic sledge is an odd one as it delivers melee damage, but can deal damage away from the player. The robotic sledge has low damage and a slow rate of attack, makes it only really useful when positioned at a choke point. Its one redeeming quality is its near 100% knockdown rate, perfect for knocking a zombie off a ledge or walkway. The robotic turret is another matter. It's a good mid-tier weapon offering okay damage and an average rate of fire. The real strength of the robotic turret is the ammo is cheap, and the magazine is the largest in the game, and later into the several hundred with the right mods and perks. The robotics are governed by the robotics inventor attribute. Each level adds damage, large increases in rate of fire, and more rounds in the magazine. Each level also increases the range at which the robots can be active, culminating in the ability to have two robots active at one time. The skill books, Tech Junkies, increase damage output and rate of fire, adds the ability to craft two more versions of robotic turret ammo, the AP ammo, and the robotic turret shells, which function like shotgun shells. They offer increased range and eight pellets at 2.1 damage per pellet in addition to the base damage of the turret, totaling 3.6. If every pellet hits, then each shot can deliver 28.8 damage. Now for the mods. The robotic sledge, we need to use a few melee mods. Burning shaft, weighted head, structural brace, and rad remover. For the robotic turret, I recommend the barrel extender, ore grip, magazine extender, or drum mag, and rad remover.
The best overall ranged weapons in my opinion are the bows and crossbows. With the most versatile ammo and the best perks available, the bows can keep the player alive from the very start to late game. You can also make stone ammo while out and about in the world. Use the iron and steel to get through armor. Flaming arrows and bolts can deal greater damage. And the exploding variety can take on the blood moon. It's always wise to have two options while playing. Like using the bows while you're out and about, paired with a 9mm firearm for close quarters combat in groups. You can also share ammo with rifles and machine guns to cover both long range and close quarters or groups. Experiment and find a good balance for you while being on the lookout for the best mods, perks, and skill books. So for early game to late, you can be better informed on what to use to survive the zombie apocalypse. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have, please leave a like. Don't forget to share this video with other survivors, and be sure to subscribe for more 7 Days to Die videos. If you're already subscribed, thank you. I appreciate it. Until next time, laters.